Anarchy refers to a society, entity, group of people, or a single person that rejects hierarchy. The word originally meant leaderlessness, but in 1840 Pierre Joseph Proudhon adopted the term in his treatise What is Property? to refer to a new political philosophy, anarchism, which advocates stateless societies based on voluntary associations. In practical terms, anarchy can refer to the curtailment or abolition of traditional forms of government and institutions. It can also designate a nation or anywhere on earth that is inhabited that has no system of government or central rule. Anarchy is primarily advocated by individual anarchists who propose replacing government with voluntary institutions. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> the word anarchy comes from the ancient Greek anarchia, anarchia, which combines a, a not without and arch archi, ruler, authority. Thus, the term refers to the state of a society being without authorities or an authoritative governing body. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political philosophy. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Description. Anarchism as a political philosophy advocates self-governed societies based on voluntary institutions. These are often described as stateless societies, although several authors have defined them more specifically as institutions based on non-hierarchical free associations. Anarchism holds the state to be undesirable, unnecessary, or harmful. While anti-statism is central, Anarchism entails opposing authority or hierarchical organization in the conduct of all human relations, including, but not limited to, the state system. There are many types and traditions of anarchism, not all of which are mutually exclusive. Anarchist schools of thought can differ fundamentally, supporting anything from extreme individualism to complete collectivism. Strains of anarchism have been divided into the categories of social and individualist anarchism or similar dual classifications. Anarchism is often considered to be a radical left-wing ideology, and much of anarchist economics and anarchist legal philosophy reflect anti-statist interpretations of communism, collectivism, syndicalism or participatory economics. Some individualist anarchists are also socialists or communists, while some anarcho communists are also individualists or egoists. Anarchism as a social movement has regularly endured fluctuations in popularity. The central tendency of anarchism as a mass social movement has been represented by anarcho communism and anarcho syndicalism, with individualist anarchism being primarily a literary phenomenon which nevertheless did influence the bigger currents, and individualists also participated in large anarchist organizations. Some anarchists oppose all forms of aggression, supporting self-defense or non-violence anarcho-pacifism, while others have supported the use of militant measures, including revolution and propaganda of the deed, on the path to an anarchist society. Since the 1890s, the term libertarianism has been used as a synonym for anarchism and was used almost exclusively in this sense until the 1950s in the United States. At this time, classical liberals in the United States began to describe themselves as libertarians, and it has since become necessary to distinguish their individualist and capitalist philosophy from socialist anarchism. Thus, the former is often referred to as right-wing libertarianism, or simply right libertarianism, whereas the latter is described by the terms libertarian socialism, socialist libertarianism, left libertarianism, and left anarchism. Right libertarians are divided into monarchists and anarcho-capitalists or voluntarists. Outside the English-speaking world, libertarianism generally retains its association with left-wing anarchism. Immanuel <laughs> <laughs> Kant The German philosopher Immanuel Kant treated anarchy in his anthropology from a pragmatic point of view as consisting of law and freedom without force. 
Thus, for Kant, anarchy falls short of being a true civil state because the law is only an empty recommendation if force is not included to make this law efficacious. Legitimation, etymologically fancifully from legem timir, i.e., fearing the law. For there to be such a state, force must be included while law and freedom are maintained, a state which Kant calls a republic. Kant identified four kinds of government Law and freedom without force anarchy. Law and force without freedom despotism. Force without freedom and law barbarism. Force with freedom and law republic. Topic: Anthropology. Although most known societies are characterized by the presence of hierarchy or the state, anthropologists have studied many egalitarian stateless societies, including most nomadic hunter-gatherer societies and horticultural societies such as the Samai and the Piaroa. Many of these societies can be considered to be anarchic in the sense that they explicitly reject the idea of centralized political authority. The egalitarianism typical of human hunter gatherers is interesting when viewed in an evolutionary context. One of humanity's two closest primate relatives, the chimpanzee, is anything but egalitarian, forming hierarchies that are dominated by alpha males. So great is the contrast with human hunter-gatherers that it is widely argued by paleoanthropologists that resistance to being dominated was a key factor driving the development of human consciousness, language, kinship, and social organization. In Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology Anarchist anthropologist David Graeber attempts to outline areas of research that intellectuals might explore in creating a cohesive body of anarchist social theory. Graeber posits that anthropology is particularly well positioned as an academic discipline that can look at the gamut of human societies and organizations, to study, analyze and catalog alternative social and economic structures around the world, and most importantly, present these alternatives to the world. In Society Against the State Pierre Clasters examines stateless societies where certain cultural practices and attitudes avert the development of hierarchy in the state. He dismisses the notion that the state is the natural outcome of the evolution of human societies. In The Art of Not Being Governed, James C. Scott studies Zomia, a vast stateless upland region on Southeast Asia. The hills of Zomia isolate it from the lowland states and create a refuge for people to escape to. Scott argues that the particular social and cultural characteristics of the hill people were adapted to escape capture by the lowland states and should not be viewed as relics of barbarism abandoned by civilization. Peter Leeson examines a variety of institutions of private law enforcement developed in anarchic situations by 18th century pirates, proliterate tribesmen, and Californian prison gangs. These groups all adapted different methods of private law enforcement to meet the specific needs and the particulars of their anarchic situation. Anarcho primitivists base their critique of civilization partly on anthropological studies of nomadic hunter gatherers, noting that the shift towards domestication has likely caused increases in disease, labor, inequality, warfare, and psychological disorders. Authors such as John Zerzan have argued that negative stereotypes of primitive societies e.g. that they are typically extremely violent or impoverished are used to justify the values of modern industrial society and to move individuals further away from more natural and equitable conditions. Examples of state collapse anarchy English Civil War 1642 Anarchy was one of the issues at the Putney Debates of 1647 Thomas Rainsborough, I shall now be a little more free and open with you than I was before. I wish we were all true-hearted, and that we did all carry ourselves with integrity. If I did mistrust you I would not use such asseverations. I think it doth go on mistrust, and things are thought too readily matters of reflection, that were never intended. 
For my part, as I think, you forgot something that was in my speech, and you do not only yourselves believe that some men believe that the government is never correct, but you hate all men that believe that. And, sir, to say because a man pleads that every man hath a voice by right of nature, that therefore it destroys by the same argument all property, this is to forget the law of God. That there's a property, the law of God says it, else why hath God made that law, thou shalt not steal. I am a poor man, therefore I must be oppressed, if I have no interest in the kingdom, I must suffer by all their laws be they right or wrong. Nay thus, a gentleman lives in a country and hath three or four lordships, as some men have, God knows how they got them, and when a parliament is called he must be a parliament man, and it may be he sees some poor men, they live near this man, he can crush them, I have known an invasion to make sure he hath turned the poor men out of doors, and I would fain know whether the potency of rich men do not this, and so keep them under the greatest tyranny that was ever thought of in the world. And therefore I think that to that it is fully answered, God hath set down that thing as to propriety with this law of his, thou shalt not steal. And for my part one am against any such thought, and, as for yourselves, I wish you would not make the world believe that we are for anarchy. Oliver Cromwell, I know nothing but this, that they that are the most yielding have the greatest wisdom, but really, sir, this is not right as it should be. No man says that you have a mind to anarchy, but that the consequence of this rule tends to anarchy, must end in anarchy, for where is there any bound or limit set if you take away this limit, that men that have no interest but the interest of breathing shall have no voice in elections. Therefore, I am confident on t we should not be so hot one with another, as people began to theorize about the English Civil War. Anarchy came to be more sharply defined, albeit from differing political perspectives. 1651 Thomas Hobbes Leviathan describes the natural condition of mankind as a war of all against all, where man lives a brutish existence. For the savage people in many places of America, except the government of small families, the concord whereof dependeth on natural lust, have no government at all, and live at this day in that brutish manner. Hobbes finds three basic causes of the conflict in this state of nature, competition, diffidence and glory. The first maketh men invade for gain, the second, for safety, and the third, for reputation. His first law of nature is that, every man ought to endeavor peace, as far as he has hope of obtaining it, and when he cannot obtain it, that he may seek and use all helps and advantages of war. In the state of nature, every man has a right to everything, even to then go for one another's body. But the second law is that, in order to secure the advantages of peace, that a man be willing, when others are so too, to lay down this right to all things, and be contented with so much liberty against other men as he would allow other men against himself. This is the beginning of contracts, covenants, performing of which is the third law of nature. Injustice, therefore, is failure to perform in a covenant, all else is just. 1656 James Harrington, the Commonwealth of Oceania, uses the term to describe a situation where the people use force to impose a government on an economic base composed of either solitary land ownership, absolute monarchy, or land in the ownership of a few, mixed monarchy. He distinguishes it from commonwealth, the situation when both land ownership and governance shared by the population at large, seeing it as a temporary situation arising from an imbalance between the form of government and the form of property relations. <laughs> French Revolution 1789 Thomas Carlyle, Scottish essayist of the Victorian era known foremost for his widely influential work of history, The French Revolution, wrote that the French Revolution was a war against both aristocracy and anarchy, meanwhile, we will hate anarchy as death, which it is, and the things worse than anarchy shall be hated more. Surely peace alone is fruitful. Anarchy is destruction, a burning up, say, of shams and insupportabilities, but which leaves vacancy behind. 
Know this also, that out of a world of unwise nothing but an unwisdom can be made. Arrange it, constitution build it, sift it through ballot boxes as thou wilt, it is and remains an unwisdom, the new prey of new quacks and unclean things, the latter end of it slightly better than the beginning. Who can bring a wise thing out of men unwise? Not one. And so vacancy and general abolition having come for this France, what can anarchy do more? Let there be order, were it under the soldier's sword, let there be peace, that the bounty of the heavens be not spilt, that what of wisdom they do send us bring fruit in its season. It remains to be seen how the quellers of Sanskalotism were themselves quelled, and sacred right of insurrection was blown away by gunpowder, wherewith this singular eventful history called French Revolution ends. Armand II, Duke of Aiguillon came before the National Assembly in 1789 and shared his views on the anarchy, I may be permitted here to express my personal opinion. I shall no doubt not be accused of not loving liberty, but I know that not all movements of peoples lead to liberty. But I know that great anarchy quickly leads to great exhaustion and that despotism, which is a kind of rest, has almost always been the necessary result of great anarchy. It is therefore much more important than we think to end the disorder under which we suffer. If we can achieve this only through the use of force by authorities, then it would be thoughtless to keep refraining from using such force. Armand too was later exiled because he was viewed as being opposed to the revolution's violent tactics. Professor Chris Bosche commented on the role of anarchy in the revolution. In the French Revolution, the narrative of increasing anarchy undermined the narrative in which the revolutionaries were striving to create a new social order by writing a constitution. Topic Jamaica 1720, Sir Nicholas Laws, Governor of Jamaica, wrote to John Robinson, the Bishop of London, in 1720, as to the Englishmen that came as mechanics hither, very young and have now acquired good estates in sugar plantations and indigo and co., of course they know no better than what maxims they learn in the country. To be now short and plain your lordship will see that they have no maxims of church and state but what are absolutely anarchical. In the letter, Laws goes on to complain that these estated men now are like Jonah's good and details the humble origins of the Creolians, largely lacking an education and flouting the rules of church and state. In particular, he cites their refusal to abide by the Deficiency Act, which required slave owners to procure from England one white person for every 40 enslaved Africans, thereby hoping to expand their own estates and inhibit further English, Irish immigration. Laws describes the government as being anarchical, but nearest to any form of aristocracy. Must the king's good subjects at home who are as capable to begin plantations, as their fathers, and themselves were, be excluded from their liberty of settling plantations in this noble island, forever and the king and nation at home be deprived of so much riches, to make a few upstart gentlemen princes? Topic. Russian Civil War 1917 During the Russian Civil War, which initially started as a confrontation between the Communists and Monarchists, on the territory of today's Ukraine, a new force emerged, namely the Anarchist Revolutionary Insurrectionary Army of Ukraine led by Nestor Makhno. The Ukrainian anarchist during the Russian Civil War also called the Black Army organized the free territory of Ukraine, an anarchist society, committed to resisting state authority, whether capitalist or communist. This project was cut short by the consolidation of Bolshevik power. Makhno was described by anarchist theorist Emma Goldman as an extraordinary figure. Leading a revolutionary peasants' movement, during 1918, most of Ukraine was controlled by the forces of the Central Powers, which were unpopular among the people. In March 1918, the young anarchist Makhno's forces and allied anarchist and guerrilla groups won victories against German, Austrian, and Ukrainian nationalist, the Army of Simon Petlura forces, and units of the White Army, capturing a lot of German and Austro-Hungarian arms. 
These victories over much larger enemy forces established Macno's reputation as a military tactician. He became known as Batko, father to his admirers. Macno called the Bolsheviks dictators and opposed the Cheka secret police and similar compulsory authoritative and disciplinary institutions", and called for f freedom of speech, press, assembly, unions and the like. The Bolsheviks accused the Makhnovists of imposing a formal government over the area they controlled, and also said that Makhnovists used forced conscription, committed summary executions, and had two military and counter intelligence forces, the Razvedka and the Komisia Protivmakhnovskik Del, patterned after the Cheka and the Gru. However, later historians have dismissed these claims as fraudulent propaganda. Topic: Spain, 1936. Francisco Franco, a fascist Spanish general, staged a military rebellion which attempted overthrow the Popular Front, the established Spanish government, in 1936. Following Franco's rebellion, anarchist, communist, and what remained of Popular Front joined forces against Franco. This was seen as a social revolution as much as a political revolution to some. Throughout the war and shortly after, many Spanish working-class citizens lived in anarchist communities, many of which thrived during this time. With major support of Germany and Italy the nationalists won the war, and set up a fascist dictatorship led by Franco, effectively ending much of the anarchism in Spain. Topic. Albania 1997. In 1997, Albania fell into a state of anarchy, mainly due to the heavy losses of money caused by the collapse of pyramid firms. As a result of the societal collapse, heavily armed criminals roamed freely with near total impunity. There were often three to four gangs per city, especially in the south, where the police did not have sufficient resources to deal with gang-related crime. Topic: <inaudible> Somalia, 1991 to 2006. Following the outbreak of the civil war in Somalia and the ensuing collapse of the central government, residents reverted to local forms of conflict resolution, either secular, traditional or Islamic law, with a provision for appeal of all sentences. The legal structure in the country was thus divided along three lines, civil law, religious law and customary law while Somalia's formal judicial system was largely destroyed after the fall of the Siad Bar regime, it was later gradually rebuilt and administered under different regional governments, such as the autonomous Puntland and Somaliland macro-regions. In the case of the transitional national government and its successor the transitional federal government, new interim judicial structures were formed through various international conferences. Despite some significant political differences between them, all of these administrations shared similar legal structures, much of which were predicated on the judicial systems of previous Somali administrations. These similarities in civil law included, a, a charter which affirms the primacy of Muslim sharia or religious law, although in practice sharia is applied mainly to matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, and civil issues. The charter assured the independence of the judiciary, which in turn was protected by a judicial committee, b, a three-tier judicial system including a Supreme Court, a Court of Appeals, and Courts of First Instance either divided between district and regional courts, or a single court per region, and c, the laws of the civilian government which were in effect prior to the military coup d'état that saw the Bar regime into power remain enforced until the laws are amended. Topic. Lists of ungoverned communities Topic. Ungoverned communities Zomia, Southeast Asian highlands beyond control of governments 
Republic of Kospaya (1440–1826), Anarchy in the United States (19th century), The Diggers (England, 1649–1651), Libertatia (late 17th century). Neutral Mareznet, the 26th of June 1816 to the 28th of June 1919. Kowloon Walled City was a largely ungoverned squatter settlement from the mid 1940s until the early 1970s. Drop City, the first rural hippie commune, Colorado, 1965 to 1977. Comunidad de Poblacion en Resistencia (CPR), Indigenous Movement, Guatemala, 1988 present. Slab City, squatted RV desert community, California, 1965 present. Abalali Basemjondolo, a South African social movement, 2005 present. Ras Camis. Topic. Anarchist communities Anarchists have been involved in a wide variety of communities. While there are only a few instances of mass society anarchies, that have come about from explicitly anarchist revolutions, there are also examples of intentional communities founded by anarchists. Intentional Communities Utopia, Ohio 1847, Whiteway Colony, 1898. Kibbutz, 1909 present. Life and Labor Commune, 1921. Freetown Christiania, September 26, 1971. Trumbleplex, 1993. Mass Societies Free Territory, Ukraine, November 1918 to 1921. Revolutionary Catalonia, the 21st of July 1936 to May 1939. Shinman Prefecture, 1929 to 1931. Federation of Neighborhood Councils El Alto, Fejuve, 1979 present. Rebel Autonomous Zapatista Municipalities, MAREZ, 1994 present. Democratic Federation of Northern Syria, Rojava, 2012 present. Topic. See also. Libertarian socialism. Anime. Criticisms of electoral politics. List of anarchist organizations. Outline of anarchism. Power vacuum. Unorganization